Hi, I'm Daisuke Wai. I would like to introduce our multifocal stereoscopic projection mapping technique. This work was done mainly by my student, Solashi Kimura, and my colleagues. Stereoscopic projection mapping allows a user to see a 3D object floating over a physical surface of an arbitrary shape using projected imagery. So this technique has been applied for a wide range of fields such as a tour conferencing and a museum guide. Stereoscopic projection mapping is achieved by projecting two images with proper disparity for each eye in a time sequential manner. The projected images are observed through active shutter glasses, which prevent interference between the two images for both eyes and provide binocular cues. On the other hand, Current stereoscopic projection mapping is not capable of providing the correct focus cues. The resultant versions accommodation mismatch causes significant discomfort, fatigue, and a distorted 3D perception for the observer. There are a bunch of existing solutions for the versions accommodation conflict in AR, VR displays, but we couldn't find a method that alleviated this this problem for the stereoscopic projection mapping so far. So in this paper, we propose to solve the vergence accommodation conflict in stereoscopic projection mapping. Specifically, we solve a unique problem of the stereoscopic projection mapping, that is a display surface is potentially non-planar and moving. As the center of the solution, we attach electrically focused tunable lenses ETLs to active shutter glasses to control both vergence and accommodation. So we apply first and periodical focal shifts to the, to the ETLs. Then the virtual image of every part of the real scene moves back and forth during each sweep period. And we project a target 3D object from a synchronized high-speed projector at the exact moment that the virtual image of the projected imagery on a real surface is located at a desired distance from the ETLs. From a thin lens equation, we compute the optical power of the ETL by which the virtual image of the projected result locates at the desired, desired depth. And this determines the timing when the image should be projected in a focal sweep period. So we set the frequency of the focal sweep to be higher than the critical fusion frequency so that the observer perceives the time integral of the scene appearances during the sweep period. And consequently, our technique can provide the correct binocular and focus cues. The virtual image seen through the ETL is transformed according to the change in its optical power because an observer's eye is not co-located with the ETL, but instead placed behind it. So this unintended transformation, transforming effect is called uh, lens breathing. So previous works applying ETLs to AR and VR headsets faced the same problem and they manually adjusted the displayed image to solve this problem. On the other hand, <clears throat> we propose a lens blazing compensation technique. At first, we set the target virtual image from the, the observer's point of view, by which a projection image corresponding to the target is computed. And now we consider this target virtual image from the ETL's point of view, then, the projection image is transformed. Actually, we found that this transformation can be formulated as a simple scaling with regards to the optical axis. So we compute the scaling factor from this model and scale the projection image to compensate for the lens breathing artifact. The whole rendering pipeline is as follows. In this example, we assume to display two bars on a corner surface. So first, we compute perspectively collect images for an observer's eye and simultaneously computes its depth map and the depth map of the projection surface. 
Then we divide the rendered image to separately project them at different ETL's optical power. Then finally, we apply the lens, brazi lens breathing compensation. The output images are then projected exactly when the ETL's optical power becomes the corresponding value. To synchronize the ETL's active shutter glasses and the projector, we measure the delays from the input signals. The ETLs are modulated by the same sinusoidal wave. The projector is triggered at the desired optical power of the ETLs. So in our prototype, we project images at three different optical powers. And we open and close the shutter glasses, such that the shutter of the right eye becomes open and that of the left eye becomes closed when the ETL's input wave forms the downward curve and vice versa. We conducted several experiments using a prototype, including a user study to demonstrate the feasibility of the proposed method. In this experiment, we verified whether the proposed lens breathing compensation improved the artifacts. We displayed a slanted checker pattern on a flat screen, and this result shows that our lens breathing compensation technique provided preferable appearance with, le with less artifacts than without the lens breathing compensation. And in this experiment, we projected three Stanford bunnies on a flat screen, such that the distance of the virtual image of each bunny from the ETL was, was the same as one of the physical objects. The focus point of the camera was changed from the far to the near of the physical object. So now please take a look at the right movie. The projected bunnies as well as the physical objects appeared focused from the top to the bottom according to the focus, focus distance movement. So there are three photos from the movie with different focus points. We can see that the projected bunnies are focused at different focus points. We verified whether the proposed system could provide the correct focus cues when the projection screen is non-planar. The focus point of the camera was fixed at the, the front projection plane. And the right side of the teapot appeared blurred when observed without using our technique, while, our all, while all parts of the teapot appeared focused when our technique was applied. We verified whether the proposed system could provide the correct focus cues when the projection screen moves like this. The Stanford bunny observed without using our technique appeared broad at certain screen poses, while the, the one observed using our technique always appeared focused. We constructed a prototype system consisting of a pair of liquid crystal shutters, a pair of ETLs, and a synchronized high-speed projector. The ETL's focal sip is synchronized with the opening and closing timings of the shutter, shutters and the projection images to achieve multifocal stereoscopic projection mapping. We conducted a user study to investigate the effect of the vargence accommodation conflict on the depth estimation accuracy of a human observer in stereoscopic projection mapping. In each task, participants were asked to move the physical pointer by hand until they perceived that it was located at the same depth as the projected virtual target. So this is the virtual target, and this is the physical pointer. So we conducted this depth matching test, depth matching task in two conditions. In the first condition, participants observed the pro pro projected virtual target without the focal sweep technique. So we call this condition as conventional. In the second condition, the proposed technique was applied. The result showed 
that the proposed technique could mitigate the virgins accommodation conflict and consequently it significantly reduced the distortions in perceived depths in stereoscopic projection mapping. So in conclusion, we realized the first multifocal stereoscopic projection mapping and confirmed that it worked well for various situations. The user study demonstrated the significant improvements in the depth perception by the proposed technique. As future work, we are interested in maximizing the displayed luminance by optimizing the waveform of the input signal of for the for the ETLs. Thank you very much.